Hey, um, just doing a bit of texturing now. Um, I've pretty much just been playing around with what I've got. I think I've started this video a bit too late, really, as uh, I'm sort of approaching like a nice sort of finalised colours colour scheme. Uh, I'll show you what I've got in Maya. Uh, it looks a bit dark in Maya, but I know that won't be the case in UDK. I think it's just, I don't know, when you switch to high quality mode in Maya, it just it seems to go pretty dark, so don't worry about that, try and compensate for it, but uh, yeah, this is kind of the game res version now. It's uh, 4,300 triangles, that's the topology of it so far. Um, it's okay. Probably could get rid of some of the lines, a bit excessive in some places, like around here and stuff. Um, wow, I think it looks pretty good so far. Uh, I was thinking about adding some dirt or blood or something just to sort of you know push it over the edge a little bit and I also need to drop in some geometry inside of here um, so I can make them glow inside of uh, UDK uh, I'm not sure what I need to do that I think it's I only need like I'm just going to grab a uh, cylinder um, let me just turn this down a little bit. I only I need I think five polygons will do. Let me just select them. Let's uh, get that little thing. So I'm just going to apply some sort of shader in um, UDK. So uh, just you know you can set all these different things up in UDK to make it glow and it should give me that eye look that the concept art has. So. We'll give that a try. I'm not quite sure how big these needs to be because it does sort of cover the entire eyeball on the concept. So I'm just going to probably have to play around with that a little bit. Uh, and the placement's going to be quite important. Get it quite deep into his eye socket. I think that'll do. Let's put one on this side as well. And if you're wondering why this has got checkered thing, it's because I applied a checker, uh, checker shader onto the default Lambert, so I could see, you know, just checking. Um, so I've got a, a nice evenly spaced texture map. If you're wondering what's going on with that, and I think and what I'm going to do is, cause I think when I um, use the glowing thing, it's going to be quite harsh on the silhouette, so I'm just going to divide that. Um, Mm, does it smooth it in there, does it? Um, I think there's a way to smooth that. Um, smooth. I'll just turn all that off. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that should give me what I want. And I'm just going to apply another shader on that. So when it gets imported into UDK, it'll have a separate uh, a separate material space for those little eye pieces. Um, that's pretty much it so far. Just gonna like, Google some dirt textures and blood and stuff, and then I'll just put them on. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I guess so I can um, talk about texturing a little bit. Uh, if Google works, whatever I'm recording, man, and it seems to go really slow. It's pretty obnoxious. I don't know if you can work. Hey, okay. I'm just gonna type in blood splat. And just go on that. And there's usually, you know, adequate images for what I want to use it for. I always seem to go for that one for some reason. I've used that countless many times. Uh, but a lot of them have um, watermarks on them, irritatingly. Like, I mean, who's going to pay for this? <laughs> yeah, you can get quite crazy with this guy. He's quite evil looking. Almost into the fun stuff now, though, with the uh, the UDK-ness. You know, you get to animate some more cameras. I was surprised how much I was enjoying it last time. <laughs> I'm just going to sell that to multiply as well. I only want, like... The outline of the uh, the blood, and I can sort of just 
play around with different versions of it. You know, play around with different, you know, just... The thing about doing all this texture work is that it's a lot of just tweaking values and I always, always stress about saturation. Never make things ridiculously saturated because it looks silly. You know, if, if you're going for something realistic, obviously. Um, but in our real world, in our world, nothing is ever as saturated as, as, as you know. I think when you're messing around in Photoshop, um, it tends just to get quite saturated most of the time. Um, in my case, it does anyway. So I just, just watch, just watch out for that. Uh, yeah, oversaturation is real bad. And you will notice as soon as you start to tweak it down just a little bit, it just looks so much better. And I'm just going to get rid of that because I know this is his toenail, this little piece here. Just get rid of the blood on that. Probably add some dirt on that bit. I'm just using my, what's this called, I think it's stamp tool. Clone stamp. Uh, if you press S, I think the short key for that is, uh, you basically can just copy any part of an image uh, and that is just super super useful for stuff like this you know I use stamp tool quite a bit when I'm doing textures like this I'm just thinking where would the blood be uh, definitely on this Sort of knife like thing is going on. Let's make that a bit smaller. So we have to make the opacity a little bit less so it's not ridiculous. And same on the other side. Make that nice and gory. Stretch it out a little bit so it looks like it's really. Um, you know, it's really been dragged up and it's really been forcefully like, shoved into someone, you know. <laughs> I'm going to need some blood on his fingers. I always try not to overdo the blood, but I don't know, I just, I like to just, it's quite fun putting it all in and stuff, so. I play around with different things. That looks pretty cool, actually. Looks like it's all dried on. Nah. It's a bit, bit, bit 8 bit. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, can't help just use multiply or darken or something. Darken doesn't really work. Stick with multiply. It's giving me what I need. Uh, I can get quite technical with these fingers. The thing about putting blood on like such small things like the fingers is it can often end up just making them look really weird, so just, I don't know, play around when you're doing like intricate details like fingers and toes and whatnot. If you add in that is really noisy detail, you just you don't want it to look ridiculous. Uh, I'm just gonna merge all these, so I've got a massive amount. I'm also gonna erase along this the seam so it's not a, an abrupt ending on that. Uh, and I guess I'm just gonna use Stamp tool now. What's the arm? Just gonna brush some around here on this big fuck off arm that's going on. <laughs> Just make it more interesting. Uh, we'll have to see what it looks like in a minute though, because yeah, I'm being a bit random with this now. Uh, where's that sort of nice? Nah, that's too crazy. Um. Let me get a soft brush on as well, so I'm not just erasing the hell out of this.
Okay, now I pretty much got rid of everything then. <laughs> right, let's just see what that looks like. Probably won't make much of a difference, but I like to update regularly. Sometimes you can just go mental with it and it just looks a bit odd. Yeah, I think that's okay. It's not too much. I might have to put a bit on that finger though. It's looking a bit weird. It's just being so clean. Yeah, I like the blood around his mouth. Might put a bit of blood around his eye sockets as well. That looks brutal. Uh, yeah, there's enough blood down there. Might try and brine it up a little bit. Is that all of this to hands? Awesome. Um, let me just brighten that up. It's a smidge. Uh, yeah. So I'm just bring the saturation down a little bit. The thing about saturation in blood though is that dried blood isn't as red as it is when it's fresh. So once it's dried, it, the red colour sort of washes out a little bit. So it's more realism, I guess. I don't know, I've just, I've just seen some pretty crazy stuff. People have just like, <laughs> like bright red blood everywhere and just, I don't know, it just looks really silly. I mean, I'm probably over killing the blood right now, but I just, I don't know, I think it looks cool, so. As long as I don't get to a point where it looks ridiculous, you know, I think I can get away with it. I'm presuming because this is a horror game, the actual creature will probably be really poorly lit anyway, so <laughs> definitely get away with it there. Um, get a bit of this blood splatter around his eyeballs. See what that looks like. This is pretty much what the texturing process is, I guess. Just going back and forth and just checking it out and then redoing stuff. It's pretty much all there is to it. The hardest thing is just getting the uh, the colours right, I guess. When you you know when you're sort of messing around with your compositing and stuff like that and getting all your textures out of ZBrush. That's probably the most difficult bit really. I should have I should have filled myself do that. So I had to change bits and I had to do all these quite specific edits to certain areas where it wasn't working as well. Uh yeah. Yeah, that should look okay. That's a bit better. I think it look cool when it's, when it's got glowing eyes and stuff. Um. Okay, let's get some dirt going. Dirt's always weird because you've got to kind of mess around the transparency on it. You know what I mean? So you don't want just like a big massive patch of dirt on him. Uh, I usually have a just, to find something that's quite contrasty and has quite a bit of noise on it. This, this might work. It's pretty small though. Give it a bash. See it loads up. No, that's too bright. That's too crazy. Yeah, who would have thought finding dirt is so difficult? Let's try that. I think I've used this one before actually. It's very contrasty. Let me try it. I can't quite remember how I do this. I think what I do is I, if you double click on that area right near the edge, it brings up this layer style. And um, you can use this blend button here. You can get rid of all the blacks. So you're left with this really noisy kind of detail like that. And you're gonna have to convert it to a smart object 
and then rasterize it. So um, it's now that's what it is. It's got the transparency because if if you don't do that little rasterizing and converting and whatever, um, you won't be able to you know like select the actual thing. So that's just something to be wary of when you're using this trick. Uh, I'm just going to bring down the brightness. Turn legacy on so it's using the scale of not to one. This doesn't leave my real light dirt anymore. Yeah, I'll do. I think what I'm going to do now is add a bit of motion blur on it. Not that much. Yeah, I'll do. And then duplicate it. And then motion blur. And duplicate. Nah, no, I'll do. And then I'm going to sharpen. Maybe sharpen more, see what this is. Uh, that's okay. I'll smidge it in a little bit. And I'm going to press Ctrl B to bring up color balance. And I'm just going to play around with this. I think there's a lot of highlight information on this. There's a lot of reds. I'm just going to get these reds, turn them down a little bit. I see. I always suggest you use color balance actually when you get your textures out from ZBrush. Just just play around with this, and you can get some really cool results. Just just messing around with it, you know, not even logically thinking about what you're doing. That's why I got all this nice skull color. I was just playing around in, in, in color balance, and it just turned into that somehow. It was pretty cool. I love playing around with different sliders, you know, for the colors. Because you always end up getting stuff like you'd never ever be able to make. It's always just like really random. Probably need a little bit of blur on that. Let's do a bit of Gaussian blur. Only a little bit though. If we. I have no idea how this is going to look. I think it's just going to look like noise. I'm not quite sure. Let's just check out these options here. Uh, we'll give it a drop shadow on that. This is pretty much how I just texture all the time. It's probably why it takes quite a while. It's just because I'm messing around with so much stuff. I mean, I'm not even sure if that looks good anymore. It looks a bit odd. Let's check out these layer styles. That looks really brutal. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's all cracked and stuff. Uh, I'm just thinking if we can get some red information on the uh, the inside of that. Let's see what else we can do with it. What's the contour going to give us? Inner glow. Maybe if you set that to uh, like a red. That looks really cool. <laughs> See what I mean? Just messing around with stuff, and you just get these awesome results. Looks like it's all decaying. Kind of reminds me of Prometheus, you know, when he eats the um, that liquid from the glass or whatever it is, and he just his skin starts to fall off, and it's all like decaying away. Kind of reminds me of that. And I'd never ever achieve that without messing around with so. him. I'm just going to add that effect on all the skin now. Make it nice and brutal. Drag this one. Can't be asked doing that twice. Get rid of it on this brown stuff. I don't want it on there. I want, I want it to be sort of specific to this sort of brownish, blackish kind of skin color. Try and get some sort of theme going. Might have to turn down the red though, it might be a bit much now. Now that I've got it on such a wide range of this model. 
but I think that was pretty rad. We just, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that trick again. I'm going to convert to smart and then rasterize. Ooh, let's get rid of it on it. I'll probably have to make a new layer and then just press Control E to merge it down. And it does that. Let's just see if that happens. No, I'm going to get that. Hmm. I'll try. Uh, I'll try just just I was trying to adjust the contrast a little bit. No, it won't let me. Hmm, the only thing I can do is if I copy the underlying information from the underneath. But I don't really want to do that. Hmm, I might have just to play around with the uh, actually let's just up it. If I just duplicate that on top. But I get rid of the inner glow. Maybe drop it down. And what's the range on that glow? Just turn it to normal. Okay, it's not gonna work. Uh, right, we just convert that to smart. Um, I'm just gonna up the contrast on that a little bit. And I actually think that's doing anything. Uh, what's that doing for us? Colburn. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to see what it looks like. I have no clue as to what it looks like when it's on the model. If it was all going so well, then. It just started to look shit. <laughs> Not that bad actually. It just looks a bit. It looks kind of diseased a little bit now. I thought it'd have some like ridiculous effect on it. It looks kind of cool. So I'm probably just going to keep that. Uh, I might just add some dirt or something over that. Uh, I'm thinking, trying to think what else I could add, like stains or. I might try using rust. Might be interesting. Let's check how long I've been on this. 23 minutes. Okay, now I'm dragging this out. <laughs> um, I want a kind of random pan. That looks quite nice. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Hmm, might look nice with all this flakiness. Okay, let's just chuck this in. I'm just going to resize that to begin with. Yeah, that'll do. A bit of experimenting with. And I'm just going to go through these layer modes and see what I get. See if anything interesting pops up. It's kind of brutal. So I'm not quite sure. I wanted to put it on. I wanted to put it on the the legs and stuff, but it's not really doing much on the legs. Uh. Can't really see anything that's working. Let's try that trick again. I'm gonna see what happens if I get rid of the white. It's not working very well. This layer. No. Okay, that's not gonna work. Try to think what else I could do to him. Rust. Uh, what else is cool? That might work a little bit better. Why is picture so out? <laughs> uh. 
Okay, Darken. That was pretty cool. Doesn't that doesn't look any good either. The only thing that I was considering was the darken. It kind of looks. I mean. Got this layer mode a sec. No, it just doesn't. It's not working very well on this. It could look good. Let me just rasterize that. And I'm gonna add some sort of maybe inner shadow or something. Oh, let me drop shadow. But make it really harsh. Nah, it's not working. Um, auto glow, nope. Hmm. What does multiply give us? Yeah, I might just leave it as that. Let me get rid of it a little bit. Looks kind of cool on the skull. I really wanted to, you know, just add a little bit to the legs as they are looking a bit boring compared to the rest of the model. Uh, but quite like that on the... Nah. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm just going to do this on the, over the leg now and see how that looks on the model. Just literally trying to spice things up a little bit. And let's see how it looks. Nearing completion now. I get a part of it. Yeah, it certainly makes it more interesting. Just looks like blood, I guess. Might put a bell on the belt and that. Just to, you know, make it a bit more. The belt area is looking a bit bland. So let's just add a bit of this on there. Especially on this big belt here. Um, that frontal area it should sort of make it a bit more interesting a little bit around that back as well just to break up the forms a little bit and I think all I've got to do now is just export it to uh, export it in a UDK which is going to be interesting I'll save that Uh, B vocals, yeah. Yeah, that's looking a bit cooler now. I can do a bit there, and then I'm done. So we need a bit on that lower back, which is this bit here. Yeah. Okay. All I need to do now is make a specular map, that's it. Um, specular for this guy. Um, okay, last thing but not least, I'm just going to do the bottom of the feet. Where's that weird shit that we could go on here? Alright. Where's the bottom of the feet? There you go. Right, we're done, we're done, we're done. 
Now to make a speculum map out of this, it's going to be weird. Hopefully I've got the... Uh, perfect. Uh, just so I can make like a... Um, just to knead it out. Let's bring it all the way to the top. Yeah, it's much better. Okay. Specularity. Luckily for me, it's got quite a nice even range between darks and uh, you know the high levels and the dark levels. So I can just flatten that, um, copy that, and then press Control Z again. Um, I'm just going to paste that there because I'm going to just use the uh, the gradient map thing to make a black and white version of it. The only thing that needs toning down is the skull, really. So the thing about specularity is all the white information is going to be um, white information in the game engine. So if that skull is as white as it is, it's going to look ridiculous, you know, with, with, uh, in a fully lit environment inside an engine. So it's going to be using the specularity to calculate how bright it is. So let me just grab... Uh, I'm going to have to isolate that. It's using magnetic lasso here. Uh, and the idea is just to bring it down just so it ma better matches the values of the other things. And that's, that's a lot nicer. I'm just going to use um, selective color as well. Go to my whites and just tone them down. I'm going to do that once more. And there's also, I think, there's a tool in here called uh, Shadows and Highlights. Uh, Which is going to help sort of give it, I don't know, I don't know what that's done. I never really use it much. Yeah, it's just giving it a lot, you know, it's it's kind of the same tonal values. So now I can just sort of lower down the brightness a little bit. Use Legacy to do this, just so I get a bit more No, actually don't, don't use Legacy. I have to do this twice. So I don't, I don't want it to be ridiculously shiny. Uh, really bring it down. Uh, I'm going to try and use the um, the dodge tool on highlights. See what information I get coming through. Not much. Try mid tones. Let's try and bring some of these sort of harsher edges through. Just so I get a more interesting spec, you know. So this is gonna pick up all the brightest areas of this. Uh Those legs needed doing though. So look how dull it is on those legs. And that's that's, that's that's looking okay. What we need. So I'm just gonna try that. I'm just gonna flatten these two. Copy that. And turn that layer off. And then we'll make a new in the uh, the channels section. And uh, we'll just paste that spec in there. Just to save some space in UDK. And then I'm going to come back in here, save that, and I'm going to save this out. I'm going to save it out as a BMP. I, I just I've got into the habit of using it for some reason. You can use whatever you want. Um, targers, whatever. I'm going to call this boiled creature diff and spec. 
Okay, let's we'll just collect this back. I'll do. Uh, save that out. And then that's gone out now. And I just need to reopen my normals. And save them out as a BMP as well. We'll call that boiled creature normals. Awesome. I think we'll be pretty much ready now for UDK. A little preparation to do. I think I have a spare copy of him somewhere. Yeah, he's in there. Right, so I can turn my grid back on now. Uh, because I got him selected. Um, because when you import into UDK, it takes into consideration the zero point on you know whatever 3D package you're using. So. I'm just going to center him up. Let's make sure oh crap, I've got the eyes. Uh, let me just add these all together. It's going to center my pivot in it. And it centered my pivot again. Thank you for that. Uh, awesome. Uh, let's whack him back up in its center. Check his feet out. Um, we've got an artist switching now. No, it's this the. I'll do. <laughs> uh, that looks pretty good. And I think mine is set to centimeters, so I'm just going to make him a bit bigger. Like each, this is one centimeter. And I think UDK works in inches, if I'm correct. I'm not quite sure on that. But I mean, that looks pretty good, that looks fine. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much ready for UDK now. I'm going to probably pose him a little bit. But I would require putting some bones in and skinning him and all the rest of it. But I, I might do that. It depends. Uh, I'll just I'll show you how to export. If you've got the, um, you need to download something called uh, ActorX. Uh, once you've installed it into Maya or whatever package you're using, it's just uh, I think it was it AX, AX Mesh. Yeah, type in AX Mesh into your mail command. Uh, and I'm just going to bring up this, and uh, all I want to do is I want to press Auto Triangulate. I want my selected items only, and that's all I need. If you're using like hard surface stuff, you want to select this, that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Export out. Um, I'm just gonna call him Mild for UDK. And it's got two materials, just right, one material for the body and stuff, and then for the eyes as well. And that pretty much concludes texturing so far. May have to tweak it if it doesn't look right in UDK, but I'm quite happy with it. Looks pretty decent. Looks a bit better than it was in uh, in ZBrush, in my opinion, colour-wise anyway. Now I've had a chance to tweak it and make it a bit more brutal, a bit more skin-like and whatnot. Uh, yeah, see what it looks like in UDK next. Awesome.